Hello. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm here to speak about crofting in Scotland. My name is Maria Scholten, and I work for an organization called the Scottish Crofting Federation. And usually I bring pictures um, to show about Scotland, but I didn't bring them. And so I have one picture. And if you want to see the picture, please come a bit closer, and then I will explain what crofting is in detail. Ah, good. Thank you. Grazie. It's also nicer. It's also nicer that way, yeah. So when we talk about crofting, okay, yes, thank you. This is unique to Scotland, crofting. This word you won't hear at the Food Expo because this is about very small scale farming, very small scale land tenureship. And this morning, I think Enrico was his name, he talked about capitalism. And if you read Karl Marx, you may remember that capitalism was started in England and Scotland, and it started by driving the small farmers out of the land. And that happened in Scotland for centuries, that the the big landowners saw there was more profit in sheep than in people or in peasants. So they drove the peasants out of the country or to the very bad marginal lands. So that led to a lot of misery for the people that were still there. And so much misery that there was a national commission at the end of the 19th century to say this has to stop. There's too much misery, too many poor peasants. We have to do something. And then there was legislation and there was crofting law. And since then, the peasants had a right of tenure. They had a right to be on the land and to give the land to their sons and daughters. They could not be driven off the land anymore. The other side was they had the land for not, you know, for little rent, but there was the obligation to work the land and to keep it in proper condition. And that system is now 130 years old, over a century. It's a land tenure system. And it has functioned really well. And I think why has it functioned really well is because you have small farmers, small peasants, and it has kept a lot of people in the countryside. Where the peasants were driven away in Scotland, there's no more people, no more villages. It's empty. But where the small peasants have stayed, they're small villages. You have a shop, you have a school. The school will have children. There's a local economy around that. What's more, because it's small scale, it's very much low input, low output. So we have very high quality animals coming from these lands. The peasants, they spend a lot of attention to their animals, to their cattle and the sheep. It's, you could say it's organic. It's not officially organic because their certification is too expensive. So that's one big, another big advantage. Because it's so low input, there's high biodiversity. Lots of wildflowers, wild birds, and also lots of rare breeds and land races are still kept because they can stand the difficult conditions. So nowadays, I have to show this picture now. So if you think of Scotland, 
you will see a big hill, yeah, a mountain, not much on it because the trees have gone. And then you will see these small strips of land, yeah, small pieces of land, and each piece is a croft. So you will have a croft there, and the village is there. So each crofter has a small piece, a small piece of land, but also he can put his cattle and sheep on the hill. So there's still common land, which is quite unique in Europe. So that's how, if you see this pattern, you think, oh, this is, there's lots of small scale peasants around here. This system has survived for over 100 years. It's a good system. There's some problems, but it's a good system. We have to fight really hard for the rights of, small, of this small scale production in Scotland. For example, if you think about common land, a lot of the policy makers don't know about common land and they will make measures, they will do policy that's not suitable for us. That's one fight at the, say in Brussels for the new cap, for the new common agricultural policy. Another issue is uh, young people wanting to come into farming or small scale crofting. If you have, say, if a croft is in your family, it's okay because it's inherited. But there's lots of young people wanting to do small-scale agriculture, small-scale farming, and land prices are very high, very high prices for land. The investment to do that is too high. And there's also a lack of cheap houses and a lack of employment, because this is small-scale farming and you will need an extra job. So within our organization, a couple of weeks ago, we had a group of young people meeting and we thought it was a good idea to also get some old folks and to discuss the future of this system and how the older crofters can help the young ones, the, the younger people that want to come into crofting. And, um, and some of these issues came up, like they said, it's too expensive to buy land. There's not enough rented land in there. It's too expensive to buy a house or to build a house. There's not enough work. So all these problems together make that you think like, okay, this is a huge problem because if we don't solve this problem, there's no, not enough young farmers coming in, not enough young peasants coming in. But okay, this, this is a group and I hope they will get here next time when there is a manifestation like this to talk about their actions for Scotland and for the peasants in Scotland. And I hope they will be part of Via Campesina to fight for small peasants. Yeah. And there's two of us around, Sarah McLean, you may have seen her, and myself. And I brought a couple of magazines. This is our magazine. It's a lot about politics and policy, but also very practical things about what do you do with your chicken when they do this, or what is a good breed of cows? So have a look, we walk around and, and come and ask questions. And thank you for your attention.